Hey everyone, it's Adam again with another What's New in Mix Effect. This week I released Mix Effect 1.06, so let's take a look at what we have. Here is our release notes. I've made some changes to SuperSource. We're going to talk about locked box sources, but the main thing we're talking about today is Hyperdeck support. So let's get started. First off, what is a Hyperdeck? A Hyperdeck is a playback and record device from Blackmagic Design. Here's a picture of the Hyperdeck Studio Mini that I'm using right now. And what it can do is it can play back video and it can also record video. So we take a look at my desk over here and I'm gonna switch audio sources real quick from my mic to the iPhone over here. So we have the Hyperdeck here. Uh, it has two SD card slots that can be used to play back or record video footage onto. It has a bunch of, uh, actually show it on the box over here. It has a uh, reference STI in, has ethernet for control or USB. Ethernet is, uh, can also be power over ethernet, which is how I'm powering the device right now. It's got HDMI out. It has two SDI outs, so you can plug those into the ATEM Extreme, which I'm doing right now with these SDI to HDMI converters. And so they will act as key and fill. And we also have an SDI in, so I have an HDMI to SDI converter from the ATEM auxiliary port number two, which is showing program out, and it's going into the Hyperdeck. So what this allows us to do is the HDMI out from the extreme into the Hyperdeck allows me to record the program uh, from the extreme, and then the two outs lets me play back clips that could have uh, alpha channels. Um, onto the extreme, okay? And then we have some controls, hardware controls here. So we're gonna switch back over here and we're gonna take a look at the iPad. So this is the iPad over here. I'm gonna make shortcuts disappear for a second and I'm gonna just bring myself in just like that. So we have a Hyperdeck section over here. Now, if you have just upgraded to Mix Effect 1.06 and you don't see the Hyperdeck section down uh, in your switcher navigation settings, all you have to do is go to your switcher details, scroll, and tap reset layout, and the hyperdeck will appear. You'll notice that camera control also appeared. That's because I was able to remove it by just swiping like that and choosing delete. So if you don't use camera control on your ATEM, you can just get rid of it and you won't have to see it in the navigation. There's actually a temporary removal of camera control from any non ATEM mini lineup of switchers. That's because there's a bug currently that could cause your switcher to crash. And we don't want that to happen, so I removed the feature temporarily. Um, the feature was, the bug was uh, involved trying to control an SDI camera using the HDMI controls from the ATEM. So we don't want that to happen, so I temporarily removed that. And if you don't have a Hyperdeck, all you have to do is swipe again to make it go away. But since we're going to be showing Hyperdecks, we're going to bring it back. So there's two places where you can have Hyperdeck controls. One is here in the dedicated Hyperdeck section. Um, the other one is in the switcher page. So I've added this panel. This is the Hyperdex All panel, which if you have four Hyperdex, you can see a little tabbed interface like this. You can also add a Hyperdeck panel, which would show all four panels all at once. Okay, And you can add those things from the edit this page and the switcher pages. So I can just do this. And find the Hyperdeck section, which is down there. Tap close. And you'll see it's it's right there. So if I had four of these, I would actually have four Hyperdeck panels visible on screen. Or if I wanted to use the consolidated one, we can do it like that. We're going to stick with the consolidated one for the purposes of this video. So I'm going to remove the Hyperdex one from this switcher page. In fact, we're going to go to the dedicated Hyperdeck section so we show you how this works. <clears throat> So here we have uh, the interface, and it's if you're familiar with Hyperdeck panel and ATEM software control, this is going to look very familiar, although I have made a few changes. So I have a dedicated record and playback tab, so to kind of separate what's, what's happening. Um, down here is a simple thing is what's the current clip, uh, how long is it, how much time has elapsed, and how much time is remaining. So we're going to click play. The loop button can let you loop between a single clip or all the clips or none of the clips. So we'll have it looping for a single clip, so that means it will replay it back over and over again. Um, it's not showing on, 
on program feed because I have, and you see down here in the bottom right, it says hyperdeck fill, that's input seven. But if I switched my super source to show all the things, you'll see that it turns red because it's on, uh, it's now in program because it's now visible in the super source. Okay. So you see it's playing back a clip that I record earlier today and it's just looping that. Um, you see down below here are two little SD card icons. This allows you to switch between the SD card slots, something you can't do from ATEM software control, and you can only do either through the TCIP Ethernet protocol or by physically removing the SD card slot. So what we're going to do is we're going to click Stop, and I'm just going to click this, and it will switch the thing. And you can see the first clip gets loaded up like that. Now if I click this again, it will load up the clips on here. Now, what's interesting is that, and I haven't figured out what's happening. I, I see this bug in ATEM software control is that I recorded some clips earlier and it showed me all of them. But then when I loaded um, the SD card slot again, it only showed the clips that I had added to the HyperDeck earlier before this video was done. So I'm not quite sure what's happening there, but maybe we can find out by asking Blackmagic. With the playback controls, you can again start like this and loop. We also have shuttle controls, so I can just tap and drag this. And right now it's frozen again. I've been noticing sometimes the controls get a little frozen sometimes. Usually you can just get it back by just leaving the section and then coming back. And then you can move it and you can fast forward uh, or go backwards at eight, uh, you know, half speed, quarter speed, half speed, three quarter speed, full speed, two speed, four speed, and eight speed. Or you can go backwards the same amount. We also have the jog wheel and you can use this to move frame by frame so if i find a part where i'm actually moving something so you can like do this like this and you can see me like moving up and down the um the microphone now what's great about it is if you have an iphone you can actually um feel haptic feedback which is kind of cool you can feel each frame as it moves so definitely try that out if you have an iphone and a hyperdeck over on the record, we're going to tap on record here, and this will turn it into record mode. And you can see in the multi view in the upper right, it now switches to this. So if I switched to, um, if I actually push record, it will start recording. And now I can switch between inputs. That's actually the white screen for color. If I switch this to preview and then switch this, now it's showing me. I can go like this, I can go to MP1 this and go back to the super source and go back to camera and it's recording all this stuff so now I'll click stop and then if I go back to playback we'll see the clips that I created this one was number 12 so I'm gonna play this one back and we'll just loop it and we'll see it's the exact video that I had earlier today and I'll actually turn on the audio for this so you can hear it it's showing me. I can go like this. I can go to MP1. I can go to this. And then I'll go back to the super source and go back to camera. So I turned off the audio now. So I'm going to just click stop. And there you go. To configure your HyperDex, I forgot to mention, you just go into your switcher settings, choose HyperDeck, and then enter the IP address. If you are using the HyperDeck to playback clips, be sure to set the input, which is the input that your um, key and fill, your key, your fill is set to. Um, so this would be HyperDeck fill, which is input seven on mine. And if you want the video clip to start playing back automatically, choose uh, auto roll, and then you can set your frame offset and then click save. So that's HyperDeck support in MixFX. There's also one more thing uh, if we bring up this we have shortcuts here we also have a new shortcut action called send hyperdeck command and what this allows you to do is basically uh, control anything in the hyperdeck so if you look at the hyperdeck manual there's a list of commands that you can send to the hyperdeck using a tcp ip connection so i'm just gonna click i'm gonna start playback and i'm gonna click uh, play and stop and it just stopped playback i'm gonna say play the shortcut and you'll see that the shortcut is now running again or actually the hyperdeck if i can click stop and then go 
stop, and you see that it stops over in the interface over there. Okay. So that's Hyperdeck support in MixEffect. Now let's take a look at some improvements to SuperSource. I'm going to move shortcuts out of the way, and we're going to go to SuperSource. So let's bring me in here. I've created a new feature called Locked Box Sources. So in MixEffect 1.03, I introduced the concept of um, locking all the box sources, use box sources command. But now I allow you to individually set which boxes you want to lock. So in this case, here is a list of my presets that I have. I filter them based on the what's new tags that I've added to each preset. And if we long press or control click, we can go to the edit presets and we see some new options, use box sources. So if use box sources is turned on, that will always remember what box source I've set for the ones that have been checked. So in this case, one is already set to, to one. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at ones that I've actually changed up automatically. So number four, um, if we take a look here, I have use box sources set and it's set to lock number four. Okay. And we see in this one, it's the same thing. Box source four is set. But what's different about it is this. If we take a look here, if we actually go to this, so I'm going to go to the Mac Mini one. We see that it goes to my computer screen here, and we see that Mac Mini is set as the input type for box four. Now, if I click on Media Player, what's going to happen is it's going to switch to do a hard cut because it just changed box four to Media Player one. Just say the four grid, we actually didn't want it to do the uh, Hyperdeck fill every time. We just wanted to show whatever was currently set in input four. I would just go to edit that and say, don't set number four and save that. If I go back here. So now if I am in camera Mac mini and I go back to camera one, and I say, oh, let's go back to the four grid. Now it'll stay at what it was set there. But if I was back to media player, this one, and I went back to the four grid, will stay there. So you can use use box sources and individual box sources to kind of definitely set what your preset is going to be. But if there's some boxes that you want to be able to change um, dynamically throughout your set, you can just uncheck that box and it will just adopt whatever was set previously. So you could use this actually to have like, if you have yourself on screen and seven other people, you can stay in the foregrid and just keep switching back and forth and with your inputs. So you have one uh, use box source set for yourself, and then two, three, and four set to those people. And then for the other preset, you could have two, three, and four set to inputs five, six, and seven. Okay. Uh, it's an easy way to kind of um, be able to have the same preset, but have them set to different boxes. A little complicated. All of this stuff is turned off by default, but I guarantee you, if you start playing around with it and messing around with your super sources, you'll find that it's actually an invaluable tool. And this was actually a feature that was suggested by uh, a user, Tom Q from Tom Q's Tech Tips. So definitely check out his YouTube channel because um, he's making a lot of great videos on how to make the most out of Mix Effect. So let's take a look again at some of the other features that we support um, over here. So if I can scroll on my screen, we talked about lockbox sources. There's also buttons for next and previous super source. If we go here and just create a shortcut here, and we'll just say next super source preset, uh, we can just run this and you'll see, it'll just switch between my super source presets that I have that going through each of my presets. So I'm just saying next, 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 next. And then it'll stop here when it gets to the end, it won't go to the beginning. Um, and then we also have a, corresponding action called previous super source preset, which will do the reverse. So it'll just go backwards. And you can bind this to a stream deck uh, button using companion. There's an OSC command for next and previous super source preset. So now you can just have one, but if you set up all your super sources in like a row that you definitely follow during your set, you can just keep pushing the button to go between your super source presets. So that is that action here. Uh, data preservation. So previous versions of Mix Effect did not save information like use box sources, which box sources were saved, and stuff like that, and the notes. So all that stuff is saved when you make a duplicate of a preset from the View All Presets page. Um, if you're in the Super Source section here and you say Command N for New, 
it just copies the current settings of the super source, but doesn't copy, doesn't make a duplicate copy of that preset. Something I might revisit in the future, maybe I'll add a duplicate preset option um, from this page, which you can't see right now, but maybe I'll add a duplicate preset action to this page. Because if you hit Command N um, or click the plus, that just creates a new preset based on the current preset that's here. It doesn't copy like your notes and description information. So back to this. We talked about the hyperdeck. Um, there's also shortcut actions, which you've seen before. Um, for ATEM Constellation users, there's a new set super source cascade layout. This is really cool. So I don't have a constellation here anymore. I had to return my loaner back to Blackmagic. But what you can do is um, there's a button here that says cascade, and that will let you use super sources one and two to create a super super source, which has eight up to eight uh, boxes. Set super source cascade to preset one. You can basically see a list of your presets. And when you run it, it will do both of the preset transitions all at once instead of doing it sequentially one after the other. So that's a cool way to get an animation if you have an ATEM constellation and you want to run both super sources at once. And again, this also works in OSC for your Stream Deck and Companion. So user interface, we talked about the ability to remove um, switcher sections. OK, so another feature of Mix Effect 1.06 is if you have an ATEM constellation, you'll now see a lot of your um, audio sources actually have the correct labels. So this is an ATEM Extreme, so it doesn't have all the uh, audio inputs. But if you have a constellation, you may have seen unknown for a lot of inputs. But now you'll see inputs 21 through 40, and the MADI inputs and the TRS inputs. There's a, currently a bug that I'm going to fix in the next version of Mix Effect where you can't see the audio um, uh, labels for a split audio, but that's going to be fixed in the next version. Another cool feature in Mixback 1.06 is that I have now added support to trigger video follows audio when your audio is not mixed in. So this is a really cool feature. So previously, if you had video follows audio turned on, um, the audio source actually needed to be active. So it needed, you needed to have green bars um, instead of the gray bars here when it's an inact inactive source. But now you can just trigger this, uh, allow trigger when source is off air. And you can click Enable Video Falls Audio. And now your super source will run, not your super source, your video falls audio trigger will run um, even if your audio is not on air. So another advanced feature, not turned on by default. If you want to play with video falls audio, you'll need to go into Mix Effects Settings and enable it from the automation section. So automations needs to be turned on. And then you need to also enable Video Falls Audio. And what that will do is over in the audio section, a VFA button will now appear. And I'll have another tutorial uh, at some point in the future that goes into how Video Falls Audio works. But if you want to uh, see it in action, you can watch Aaron Parecki's live stream that he held with me a few weeks back where we go over the Video Falls Audio feature. It's a really cool feature. I hope you've enjoyed this video detailing all the changes in MixEffect 1.06. I'll have more videos uh, coming up in the future, um, so stay tuned. Please subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers, and I'm uh, getting closer to that number, so every little subscribe helps. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.